everyone, welcome to the last episode of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery for April. Just thinking what month we're in. April, we're almost in May. Um, and today my plan is to finish off my block. Hopefully I get it done because there is a lot of embroidery that I'm planning. So we'll see how we go. Um, so the first thing I just want to show you quickly is I'm going to use these new threads that I've bought. I, I, I received them a little while ago, but I haven't opened them yet. Um, and I wanted to share with you what these threads are and the place that I got them, um, especially for people in Australia, just in case you're interested. So firstly, hi to Joe from Hooray Hoop. Um, Joe has a little store down in Geelong West in Victoria and I know that Joe is participating in our Roxy Journal of Stitchery so I'm just showing you her card so you can see where you can get these threads from. Um, so she's on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. I will link her Instagram um, at the bottom and probably her website as well. Um, so Joe's got a, a cute little embroidery store. I haven't been to the store, but from what I've seen on Instagram, it looks gorgeous. And she got these lovely threads in recently. So I bought myself some to give them a try. I've actually had these some of these threads before, but I thought I'd buy some more. So um, the threads that I got are these ones here. They're Australian threads called CGT, which let me think for a minute. It stands for Cottage Garden Threads. Cottage Garden Threads. And they are all hand dyed stranded cottons. So 100% cotton, you can see here 100% cotton, hand dyed in Australia. These come from Victoria as well, made in Gippsland, which I think is Victoria or is it South Australia? Someone will be able to correct me. I think it's Victoria. Um, and from memory, they were $7 a skein, I think. Um, but they're approximately that much. Um, so the thing about these threads that I like is that they're all hand dyed so you can get a lot of lovely colours and how cute is the packaging? Like look at that, it's got little, sorry upside down, turn it around. It's got little stitching, love the colour, feel the difference. So we've got little cross stitch design, running stitch, herringbone stitch, back stitch, chain stitch, blanket stitch, stem stitch and fly stitch. Which is some of the stitches that we did in our little stitch sampler and then little notes on the back which I think is super cute as well so um, I'm just going to show you the different colors I got my plan is to finish off my block with some embroidery and I want to use a lot of these new threads so we've got poppy the color poppy number 600 we've got sage which is number 800 so I'll just lie them there and I'll show you we've got hatchling which is 2401 which is got a little tiny bit of like a peachy peachy orange um, lovely aqua and then some green in it we've got apple strudel which is aqua and cream it looks like um, Tinkerbell which is pretty it's got some corally peachy colors and then into some sort of beige yellows we've got bird bath which I know is going to be good number 420 for some of the um, flowers that I'm planning on stitching. We've got some blues, aquas and also sort of violet purples. Dark U, um, 1202. Um, this is a much darker sort of turquoisey colour that comes into like a lighter one, almost like an aqua. Tropic Sea, which is great because you've got some aqua there, some darker aqua and then it comes up into some green shades. i got Duckling, which is number 2406. We've got sort of a, a um, orangey peach there, aqua blues. You can see I obviously like my blues, my aquas, etc. And then we've got oregano, which is 809, and we've got some different shades of green in there. So just to lay them out, see if I can get them all on screen because I'm zoomed in quite a bit to begin with. Uh, what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put these ones this way so you can see the colours. So I bought 10 different shades. So we've got a, quite a few greens there, which I love because they're always handy for flowers and then a few colours. Now, um, I actually did go and buy some more of these. I wasn't even thinking that they were the same threads and I saw someone post something on Instagram, a package that they received, received from um, Cottage Garden Threads and there was a really cute little pack 
for making these little fabric embroidered houses. So I actually went on there to get that pack and then I thought I'd buy some new threads. Um, they haven't arrived. I think they'll probably arrive maybe tomorrow because I ordered them last week. It doesn't take too long for it to arrive from Australia. So the other thing to note about these is if I just open one up and show you is that they are actually pre-cut. So they are pre-cut in how many centimetres? What would that be? Maybe 30 centimetre lengths? Would that be about? Let's have a look. 30 centimetre lengths maybe. It might be a bit more than that. I think that's a bit more than 30 centimetres so you can see the colour dyeing going through it. Now, that's the only downside for me. I actually don't like it when things are pre-cut because I probably break all the rules of embroidery here, but I like to use a longer thread when I'm sewing. Okay, a bit longer than this. Like this is the rule. I think it's meant to be from your... Well, this one goes a little bit longer. I thought it was meant to be sort of fingertips to elbow. This is a little bit longer. Um, but I like it just a bit longer than that, so I don't have to um, re-thread all the time. I think my sister's the same. And the other thing I don't like about pre-cuts is when I want to wind it onto my little plastic things so I can put it into my thread boxes. It's really hard because you keep getting ends and then you have to keep winding ends over ends over ends and it just looks messy. So it's the only thing I don't like about these. Other than that, they're lovely to use. I have had um, these threads before. I've even found some of these threads at our favourite sewing basket store. Um, but I can get over the fact that they're pre-cut because they are such beautiful threads. And just in case, uh, Lisa Maddock, if you're watching, hi Lisa. <laughs> um, Lisa has a lovely collection of these threads. Um, she kind of made a series, like picked, I guess, colours from them and, and has a collection that she sells, I think, through her site, but also you can buy it on their site. And I did buy some of her colours as well. And she has some lovely bright colours. So um, some of the new colours I'm getting, there are some bright ones that are coming along. So that's my cottage garden threads. Oh, and look at the... Look at the super cute smell in the packaging. Hello. <laughs> so we'll move along from the threads. I need to keep them in order so I can name them on my cards. Now the next thing I'm going to tell you is I'm going to use this embroidery book. So this is the Milner Craft Series Embroidered Garden Flowers by Diane Lampsey, Lampy, Lampy uh, with Jane Fisk. And this is an old book, I think, from the early 90s. And I bought this at the Sewing Basket, of course, for... I think it was two dollars um i've got quite a few books i got a lot of silk ribbon embroidery books because that's something i do want to learn which i haven't done much with yet but i will do and i thought i'd like to do a cottage garden so i'd be able to use some of the flowers that are in this book to put onto my block so i'm going to show you where my inspiration's coming from all right so this picture over here is the one i really like so i'm not sure if my light's shining on the page because it's a shiny page I'll just bend it a little bit so I really love this like arbor with the wisteria on it our dad's got a um, country place we call it the farm even though it's only five acres not a big property but just a, a nice country place and he has beautiful arbors like this with wisteria that grows over so I want to add that to the side of my cottage and then I love all these cottagey flowers I love this little tree here I love the magnolia I won't do that one, it's a bit big, but I'm planning on doing an edge of this. I'd like to do a tree like this, and then I'll do some of these little kind of flowers that are here and there. I also love the little kitty cat, so I thought I might add the kitty cat and the butterfly as well. So that's my inspiration. And then just to show you a bit more in this book, here you can see the different flowers that you can choose from, like the cyclamens there, and I love cyclamens. I've got three out in my garden. Um, that looks like um, having a mental blank. It's a bulb, hyacin, hyacin, etc. So there's lots of different flowers here that you can use, even cute little spider's web in the corner, um, daisies, things like that. And just so you know, all these flowers and, in fact, the pictures that she's put together, so I'll show you some of the others, country garden flowers, are really only using stitches that we've done in our stitch sampler so these look extremely complex but you'll find that you can actually do it 
Now I'm not going to be super amazingly perfectly neat like this because as you know Rach and I we're wonky, wonky crafters. But um, hopefully I get a pretty, pretty look. So for example, I've got the wisteria page marked out. So with the wisteria, we've got stem stitch for the vines. Um, the actual flowers are just French knots, which, which you can all do. And the leaves are little tiny lazy daisy stitches. And I won't use the exact colours here, I'll just, I'll just pick my own. Um, but it's good to see how many strands I use. Two strand, two strands, one strand, three strands, etc. So they've got a combination here in the wisteria. It's got some different colours, dark lavender and light lavender. I might see if I've got a nice variegated, I'm just saying, even this one probably might work out well. So I get variation without actually having to change my thread. Um, and it tells you what to do. So they're all pretty simple. Pretty simple diagrams of how to do something. And these are all stitches that all of you can already do, which is great. So down to my block. Just put the book to the side. Okay, so this is my block where it stands at the moment. One thing I don't like is my number two because you can't see it well enough. So I've got one of these old French labels and I'm going to... I'm going to stitch that onto the house as the number because you can't really see the two that I put there. So that's one thing that will happen today. Now, what I decided to do is do what Rach suggested and actually scan my block and then print it out. Actually, my printer's printing a bit funny. I need to clean, clean it. Um, and then what I've done is I've sketched out where I think things might go just so I can see what it looks like before I start stitching. So this is what I'm planning. Okay, so I think I've got a bit of work to do and it's all got to be done tonight. My video is due to be put up tonight. I'm, I'm starting late this week. How unusual. That happens to me every week. Um, so I'm going to have a little arbor on the side here with the wisteria. Um, some daffodils. Looks like I was drawing some cyclamens there. Maybe some hyacinths there. Some little flowers on the bottom. I, I might do the kitty cat, the butterfly. And then come over and do some additional flowers. I think they might have been pansies. I don't know what they are. I didn't even colour them in. And then I'm going to do that little tree and some other little flowers. So that's the plan. A lot of work for me to do and I better get on with it and stop talking. All right, I'll see you back in a minute when I pull all my threads together. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly just sketch out firstly my arbor. Um, I'm not going to make it perfect and use a ruler or anything like that, but I'm using one of the Friction Pilot Friction erasable pens. Um, so we have, Rach and I have both used these. Now someone did suggest to me a while ago, and I cannot remember who it was because it was right near the beginning, um, that the aqua colour is quite a good one to use because it fades down nicely. And then I had another great suggestion last week um, on my YouTube video saying, you don't have to iron, you can also erase the pen by just using a hairdryer, which was also a good point as well because it's easier to grab a hairdryer than it is to get out the iron. So good, good points, good tips, and I will probably use both of them today. So just looking, I'll leave my design here. Looking at my design, I'm just going to roughly sketch out and it doesn't need to be perfectly placed in the same exact same position. I'm going to just roughly sketch out. Oh, see, I'm already crooked. Oh, that's all right. Lucky this pen erases. So that's that bit and that's the thinner bit. Hopefully I stitch a bit straighter than I'm drawing. It's a bit hard to draw straight actually because it's an old quilt. Okay, and then my arbor. We'll just go, just loosely draw it across here. Approximately the same thickness, but it could be a little bit thicker than the pole. And then that will do. I might even make it a little bit wider, the pole. All right, and all I'm going to do with the arbor, I'm pretty sure in the book, it says to just stitch it using a back stitch. I'll just, where's my book? Up here, I'll double check. I know the arbor's towards the back of the book. Okay. 
There it is. So, oh, sorry, it's a stem stitch. Okay, so it's a, a it calls it a drab brown. So I should find myself a drab brown. Okay, I haven't got my um, threads together, so I'll, I'll go off camera again and do that now. All right, so I have this brown, which I think is pretty drabby. Uh, it's the same brown that I used to outline my house. I'm going to use that to stitch my arbor. Now in the directions, it says to use one strand of the three stranded cotton. I feel like one strand is going to be too thin for me, so um, I don't often use one strand, in fact very rarely. So I'm going to use three, just to thicken it up a bit more. So just creating a quilter's knot. Sorry if you can hear a bit of a funny noise. My neighbour upstairs lives in Hong Kong, and they, he, like my neighbour, the guy and his wife, both, both come from Hong Kong. and. Um, his wife's mother, so his mother-in-law lives here and they haven't been able to come to Australia probably about the same time as Rach hasn't been here, probably almost two and a half years. They haven't been able to get over here because of COVID and restrictions, but they're, they've just arrived today, which is exciting for them. And they are vacuuming <laughs> because other than me occasionally letting a tradie in for them or his mother-in-law coming and checking on the apartment, um, no one's really been in there for such a long time. I'm sure it's got lots of spider webs and things like that, so it needs a good clean. But anyway, the vacuum's running. So I am just performing or making the little stem stitch. Um, you can stitch towards yourself, away from yourself, whatever you're comfortable with. I often like to stitch towards myself. Um, it's just what's comfortable. Mine's going to be a little bit thicker, obviously, than the um, the uh, illustration I showed you in the book. But I think that'll be fine. So we'll try and keep it straight. Yeah, I'm going to stitch sideways just to keep it interesting. Hopefully I'm on camera. Okay. I'm just going from one texture of fabric to another and they're actually quite a different texture. That's really soft. It feels like a very thin fabric and that's more like a, a standard cotton. And then you've got the seams where the fabric has been um, hand sewn together into the old quilt. Now, someone did ask, I haven't answered questions on YouTube again. Yes, I know I'm slack again. I've started work and I get preoccupied and had a lot of marking to do. But um, someone asked what type of quilt I have used in my block. Now, my base is just a piece of old quilt, which I think looked like it might have been the wedding ring pattern, like the circular pattern. And it was a piece um, cut from that. Now I received it as a piece, as a lovely gift. Um, so I didn't ever see the whole quilt, but it looks to me like it might have been the wedding wedding ring pattern. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, and then the pieces that I've used in my house. Now this piece here, this piece here, they also just came for snippets of, from snippets of old quilt that I deconstructed that I took apart so I could use the fabric, just little scraps. Um, and then the door and the windows came from the Cantha quilt. Cantha is the Indian quilts, spelt K-A-N-T-H-A, Cantha quilt. Um, and that's where that has come from. So probably three different quilt blocks have uh, donated bits and pieces um, of old quilt to my background and my house. Okay, I think I'm going to put you on pause because it's pretty boring watching me stitch in slow motion the whole arbor. Um, I might get it done on pause and then I'll come back and show you how I start stitching some of the flowers in the wisteria. All 
Okay, so I've done a bit of work on this. I stitched the arbor with the satin stitch and then also some vines going all over the place. And I've started with the wisteria, which are just French knots, like lots and lots of little French knots. It's taken me longer than I expected. So all I'm going to do for this video tonight is just, and I know I'm already late posting it, so I'm just going to do some little leaves, tiny little um, lazy daisy stitches. I'm just picking a thread. And then this is going to be part one of my video and I will do some more stitching on it and put up a part two. Um, so I'm just looking for a nice thread. Oh, I like, mm, I like this one. No, I think the leaves need to be darker, so I'm going to do that one. Okay, so this is just a DMC stranded cotton, six strands. And for the leaves, because they're going to be quite small, I think I will just do two threads. Sorry, I'm thinking and finding my scissors at the same time. So I'll just separate my thread into two threads. We've been a little bit slow at this this week. I've been distracted. I've had marking to do and I got into the Yellowstone series. So my stepsister and even my brother were telling me to watch it, saying it was really good. And I tried to watch the first episode. I think I watched it four times because I watched it and then I didn't really get into it. And then I watched it and didn't really get into it. And then finally, we've just had Easter holidays and I gave it a go in the past week or just after Easter. And now I've binge watched it and I'm up to season four. So I'm probably three or four episodes into season four. Um, and it's super violent, um, but I'm enjoying it. Anyone else like Yellowstone or is it a bit too full on? But anyway... I can't stop watching. <laughs> so it's kind of distracted me a bit from my stitching. Um, so I'm not quite as far progressed as I would have liked to have been with this block. Um, I was planning on finishing it today, but that hasn't happened because I do have quite a bit of embroidery to go. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of this lazy daisy stitching. I'm trying to make them nice and small, just random leaves everywhere. And the leaves will just be all over the vines, just like a wisteria. And I think it will look good once it's got the green mixing in, because at the moment I feel like the arbor and the vines are blending together because I did them in the same colors. So now that I'll be adding some leaves, I think it might differentiate the vines from the arbor. So we'll see what happens. I also haven't done my haul video yet from the sewing basket. I know Rachel's done hers. I watched hers the other day. Um, I was actually surprised. I knew she bought a lot, but seeing it all in one video, it was more than what I thought. And I can't believe how many wool threads that she ended up going home with. And I think I might have got almost as many as she did. So when I actually get organized and I sort them out, I'll get my video done and you'll see what I got as well. A lot of our stuff we got was similar, um, but there were some different things. So this stranded cotton has some variegation in it. It's a dark green and then it goes to a slightly lighter green. So I don't know why, normally I do a voiceover, but tonight I just decided to um, talk live. I don't actually like talking when I'm crafting. I normally like to be silent. I find I'm uh, quicker at crafting when I just get on with it in silence. Okay, 
Are other people like that as well? Do they like? I mean, I like listening to stuff. Like if I wasn't filming right now, I'd be playing Yellowstone because um, I am getting quite nicely through the episodes. But then I'm going to hate it when it's over and I'm going to have to find another series to watch. So any good recommendations on Netflix or Stan? Let me know. I don't know if they're the same. I think I think Stan and Netflix might be the same in you in the US. I know Rach has Netflix in Italy. They don't always have the same things. Sometimes I'll watch a show and I'll tell her to watch it and it's not on there. I think they probably put different shows on in different countries at different times. It's kind of frustrating how many different um, streaming services there are because sometimes I want to watch a series and I haven't got that service, like I haven't got Apple TV. We've got Paramount here. The Paramount, I think, has the new First Lady, what's new to us, First Lady, um, about the American First Ladies, which looks like it would be a really good series, but I don't have Paramount Plus or whatever it's called. You could waste a lot of money if you subscribe to all those different services. I also have Foxtel. It's called Foxtel here, which is cable TV. Um, I have to have that one because um, then I can watch all my Real Housewives of wherever. New York, um, Jersey, the OC. I watch most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. So as you can tell, I like a bit of TV, especially when I'm crafting. I just like to have it on. So random, random flower, uh, petals, petals, leaves, not petals. So I'm just going back and forward a bit, just filling in gaps where I think it'll look good. I think if you remember me showing you the book before, it actually had a lot of um, a lot of leaves. So it's getting pretty late. I need to get this video up. I might not get all these leaves done tonight. Um, I will work on it further. And I'll have to come back with a part two video. Maybe um, by the weekend if I get time. Or on the weekend if I'm lacking time. Um, but definitely before next Wednesday. So I'll hopefully, like the plan would be, to show you a finished block before next Wednesday because next Wednesday is our new block reveal. And next week, from next week, for the next month, the videos will be on Rachel's channel first. So she will reveal the new theme next Wednesday. And I haven't thought about, I know what the theme is. We did actually pre-plan, well not pre-plan, but pre-draw them out of a hat just so we could... Um, let mum know what the order is so she can get onto staff and just so we could be organised and get some ideas. But I'm not fully sure what I'm going to do with next week. I kind of have one idea which I'll probably go with, but I need to think about it further. I've kind of got my idea for my feature, but I need to think about my background. And um, come up with some, hopefully some stuff some new sort of ideas for you guys as well try to add some different things in a little bit different each month so that um, you keep getting ideas as well
Okay, so I'm assuming you kind of get the idea here. Um, I think that the vines are kind of, because I'm doing leaves along them, are standing out better now than they did before when they were blending in with the arbor. And I'll just keep filling it in so there'll be a lot of lot of leaves. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea of what I'm doing. This might be my last leaf and I'll get a new thread. Okay, so I'm just going to get a new thread. I'll do a little bit more and then I will um, publish the video for tonight and come back with part two. Rachel also told me earlier that um, she had a lot more embroidery to do. So we are posting a little bit later. For me, it's nighttime for Rach. It's sort of morning daytime, maybe even daytime now. Um, and I'm not sure if she was gonna go with a second part. It'll just depend on what she finishes off. So a little bit later, if you're in Australia, I doubt you'll be up by the time I post this video. You'll have to watch it tomorrow. And if you're overseas, it might work out for you. So just so you know, the... Um, Wisteria flowers, the purples, I used uh, different threads. So I used the um, cottage garden threads that I said I was going to use. So I used this one. Um, I just didn't like the aqua too much because it's kind of the wrong colour. So I only did it on that first one and then I tried to avoid it. Um, needed to be more purpley blue. I used a bit of this variegated one, stranded cotton. Don't know where I got it from. I think it's a hand dyed one. And then a piece of this DMC, which is an old one. And then I mix them up. So some are variegated, some are just purple. All right, so I think I think that's probably enough um, for tonight. My video is going to get too long, so I'm going to sign off. So that's how my wisteria is coming along, and um, I will come back in the next few days or so to um, this will be done, and I'll show you how I do some of the other sort of embroideries which I drew onto my um, plan. I actually really like that. I think that looks really pretty. It's kind of funny drawing. I used um, Tombow and Pit, Faber Castell Pit pens, Texas, and they kind of bring up the ink on the um, inkjet printer. Anyway, hope you like what I've been working on today. And sorry, it's not fully done, but you'll see it done very shortly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.